Good morning everybody. Another day, me coming live from my bathroom. I just always turn on the camera like right after I finish getting ready, which happens to be in the bathroom, but hi, hello, good morning. Today is Friday, the day I am filming this. I woke up this morning, actually took in my car to get fixed, and because the place that I took my car in was like 0.9 miles away from my house they volunteered or they like offered to have an uber take me home and i was like no you know what i will walk home because surprisingly at eight o'clock this morning it was like 66 degrees outside which was really nice those days are gonna be very very far gone before we know it so i decided to take advantage so it was about a mile walk home i stopped at the grocery store got some oat milk and like granola bars and things i didn't need anything but i was listening to folklore living my best life honestly like Definitely gonna start going on some walks when it cools down again, which literally by the time I'm filming this won't be until like November and I'm not kidding. But anyways, yeah, so I had a nice little start to the day, got some random stuff done, had lunch with Drew, and now I'm getting ready to film some videos. I'll show you my little outfit I've got on today. It's gonna stay on for about four minutes because I'm just filming an intro, but you know. I'm wearing the same denim shorts that I wear in like every single video. These are thrifted, they were a pair of Gap men's jeans that I cut into shorts. I'm wearing this top, which is from Urban Outfitter. I try not to shop there a lot. And then I'm wearing these little gold hoops from Madewell. I think I got these for my birthday a couple years ago. And then this necklace is from Target. That's my look. I have straightened hair today. Every time I straighten my hair, I'm like, why did I do this? I just, I don't love it. Personally, I feel like it gets very stringy. I just painted my nails with some Essie ballet slippers I think is what it's called. I can actually find out. Let's see. It is called Oh Fiji duh. This was like if you guys remember Essie Fiji from back in the day, you know, but yeah Okay, I have some shit to do so we'll check in later <laughs> All right, a couple hours later, just wrapped up. We did it. I changed back into what I was wearing before instead of pajamas because I'm trying to like get used to wearing regular clothes again, but it's really hard. I do believe I have some packages that just got delivered. I think they're from Target. I'm excited. The FedEx person is literally right there. That's embarrassing. Ooh. Oh no. I haven't, I guess, looked at this propagation wall in a long time and there are so many of them that are dying. Like, I guess I wasn't paying attention. Here's the reality of plant momming sometimes is that it turns out like this. Oh no, my babies. Okay, I've got to change out all of these. This is kind of, it takes a long time because you have to like take it out, wash it out. It's like really not easy to wash. There's like hard water stains all over it. So that's going to be a project for tonight. But, you know, there are people in my life that are having babies or getting degrees or buying houses and doing really exciting things. And for me, um, I am growing a chia pet and I'm very excited about it. It has started sprouting. It's been like three or four days now. And honestly, it's kind of gross. So I'm just gonna give you a fair warning if plants or seeds or things that look like Extracted whiteheads freak you out then Just be cautioned. Okay, so it's under a little ziploc baggie because that's what it tells you to do So I'm gonna take it out from the ziploc bag and show you the progress She has begun to sprout my little puppy child. I don't know if you can see that but it's like the very beginnings of a little chia pet now Here's the thing. This is all fun and dandy and everything, like completely fine. But this is a lot of work for really, a, I just had a completely different idea of what I thought a chia pet was. I thought a chia pet was literally like a head, like a scalp with the holes already poked in the pot and then you basically just water it and a plant grows out of it. I didn't, I, I'm so happy that so many of you that watched that vlog also didn't realize that it was chia seeds. And if you watch my main channel video where I thrifted this, you will see me find out in real time that a chia pet is chia seeds. But in the vlog, like because of Drew being like, yeah, I kind of knew what that was. I was like, maybe I'm the only person who didn't put that together. So when I was showing it in the vlog, I was like playing it off like, yeah, it's chia seeds, but I had no idea. I was just as perplexed as some of you. So yeah, here are my chia seeds that are sprouting. 
and hopefully in a couple weeks it will be a nice flourishing strange puppy dog that eventually then the sprouts die and you have to do it all over again like i see why the fad died out but there you have it chia pet update number one okay now that me and the fedex guy aren't going to be making eye contact anymore <laughs> i'm gonna go out and see what we got left Ooh. It is something for a video. I don't want to give too much away, but I'm on the hunt for something that is very hard to find. And that is like a good pair of wide leg baggy jeans. Basically, I've been on the hunt and it's like, this is how it happens sometimes with main channel videos where I'm genuinely just like trying to buy myself a pair of jeans and then like the sizing is confusing or then I have to like size up or size down. And because most stores don't have fitting rooms open at the moment and ASOS doesn't even have like a flagship store, it's not like you can just go into a store and try on a bunch of different sizes like I used to do. It's like you have to kind of order them and figure it out. So this is basically like part two of an experiment. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. I really wanna try these on, but I think I'm gonna wait for the video. So anyways, okay, that's exciting. I really want a snack right now, but it's like 3.30 and Drew and I are pretty old and we eat dinner at like five o'clock. So I don't know, maybe we'll sit down and chat. Why not? Hello, Waywas. Have you been sitting up in the office with your dad? You've been keeping him company while he works. That's so nice of you. All right, snack time, snack and chat. Having another perfect bar. Perfect Bar Mukbang. This is not sponsored, but Perfect Bar, if you wanna sponsor me, I'm so down. I'm having peanut butter chocolate chip today. It is so good. Somebody in the comments of the last vlog where I was eating one of these said it tasted like cookie dough, and that's it. Like, that's what I was trying to say. It just tastes like you're eating peanut butter cookie dough. It's so good. I left my hydro flask upstairs, so I had to pour myself a, a glass of water, which is a foreign thing for me. I'm not gonna go on another hydro flask rant because I already did that, but left it upstairs. Didn't feel like going to get it. Actually, fun fact, this was a pasta sauce jar. We try to save as many things as we can, reuse them and stuff, and I was getting ready to recycle this, and I was like, this would be a perfect glass for like a big ass glass of water. And now I have like my glass straw, and it looks kind of cool. So anyways, I decided to have a snack because it's 3.30 now-ish. Drew just got off work. He's actually gonna go lay down. He had a migraine when he was working today, which like is awful, but he gets them so frequently that you can't really miss a lot of work. He missed work last Friday because of it. So he's gonna look into something um, through his work that can like hopefully help him because he gets like chronic migraines. But anyways, he's upstairs closing his eyes so he can feel better before we make dinner or we might order pizza tonight. Feeling kinda, feeling kinda good, feeling kinda spicy. Oh my God, like, this is my personality after being inside for a year. <laughs> Has anyone else felt this way? Okay, please let me know. I feel like this past year and some change, has completely fried my brain cells to the point where like, I don't really know how to be social anymore. There have been a few situations where I've been social, where we've had friends over, or I've FaceTimed people, a lot of FaceTime, Zoom calls, whatever. And I've literally had to text them afterwards and feel like I needed to apologize because I don't, I don't know how to be social anymore. Meaning I just, blurt out everything, like everything I say is somehow like, I saw this TikTok or I saw this tweet. I feel like I don't know how to be a functioning adult anymore. When it comes to social situations, like I reverted back to like being a kid. I'm like, do you, what, do you, what TikToks do you like? Can I see? <laughs> I don't know, it's very bizarre, but I think just like, yeah, easing back into things has been funny because I'm just so excited to see people at the times I have seen people. We've seen like one of our groups of friends were all fully vaccinated and like my mom, we saw some friends back in November, but like we tested and quarantined and all that stuff. And I just feel like every time I hang out with someone, I like have no filter anymore. Like I just get so excited. I just, I'm talking just to talk. I don't know, my brain sometimes. Please let me know if you're in the same boat. I've also been thinking, not like deeply pondering or anything, but Drew and I have been doing a lot of thinking over the last couple months, and we sort of mentioned it in a recent vlog where we talked about the fact that we were like 90% sure we were moving out of this house when our lease is up next month. Wait, 
In June. End of June. Because we moved in, we signed our lease on July 1st. Moved in like the first week of July. So a year later, our lease will be up June 30th, which is crazy. That's crazy that it's like already May. We've kind of been keeping our eye out on like some other places. Cause like we mentioned, sort of the main, and this is just like me venting. I don't know if you don't want to hear about this stuff. Sorry, but it's my channel, so I'm gonna talk about my life, you know? So the main sort of things that are downsides to living in this house is number one, I know that this sounds like incredibly like, oh man, that's such a hard problem to have, but it's just a lot to clean. Like it's a big house and it is really probably more suited for like a family with two or three kids. It's expensive. Um, Arizona, we've talked about this before, Arizona um, utilities, especially electricity is just incredible incredibly, incredibly expensive. And then also, this is like a random thing, but we have trees like all over our yard, front yard, backyard. And our landlord just doesn't, she doesn't do a great job maintaining the trees. And so it's hard because they will just shed like all over the yard in the front yard and the backyard. And we're responsible for landscaping. So especially in the front yard, we have to do the landscaping. But the second the wind blows, the entire yard is covered with debris again. And then like the HOA will reach out to our landlord and be like, you're gonna get fined if you don't clean the yard. And it just feels like, a lot of upkeep and stuff. But the other thing about it is we have so much space. I have my own room for things. Drew has his own room for things. We have like so many different areas of the house we can hang out. There's so much room for our pets. We have a huge backyard for the dog. We fully recognize that this situation is amazing. And we had considered like downsizing just to try and save some money because it, it is a lot of money. With the landscaping, with the utilities, and then with the rent all tied in together, it's like, almost as much as we were paying to live in LA, but we don't live in LA. We don't even live really in Phoenix. We live like outside of Phoenix. So it just feels like a lot. But at the same time, like the more we've started looking recently, the more we realize like how good we have it here. And we're just so afraid to start over somewhere new with like new neighbors. <sighs> It's just kind of stuff that we've been thinking about lately. Like maybe we will end up staying here for another year. And if we do stay, then we can, you know, just further kind of make this our home and we can hopefully negotiate with our landlord to maybe like trim the trees regularly so that like we don't run into this problem. If we already have it good here and we already have like a good relationship with our neighbors and it's quiet and it's peaceful. Yeah, it's far, really far away. When Drew goes back to work, like when they physically go in the office, it will take him like probably an hour to an hour and 15 minutes each way every day, which is like a lot, but it won't be forever. And I don't know. It's like, if we have a good place, we, we should probably stay, but I don't know. It's like, I can't help but wonder what else is out there, but there's really not much at the moment. There's not much out there. So anyways, those were just some random thoughts that I've been having. I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions about where I should live or what I should do, but I'm just being honest, that's where we're at right now. So we're just trying to make the smartest decision that yeah, even though this place is pricier, um, it's quiet, it's peaceful, we can mind our own business here. And whenever things go wrong with the house, we can just call our landlord and be like, hey, come fix it, instead of having to fix it ourselves if we were to own a house. So that's pretty much all that's going on with me when, when people are like, <laughs> when I'm catching up with people on FaceTime or my dad calls, like, what are you up to? It's like, mm, nothing. <laughs> I do have some exciting things coming up pretty soon here. I'm going to meet up with Alexa soon in like a few weeks. We're going to LA for the first time to see our other friends. Like basically we're only seeing people that are also fully vaccinated just to be as safe as possible. Possibly going to see my dad. I don't know how I feel about flying just yet. Flying is the thing that just makes me really, really nervous, especially because you're just in such close quarters. But I know that there are a lot of differing opinions like people say it's actually pretty safe because the air recirculates etc but like it's also you're just really in close quarters with people i don't want to be like on a plane when they have to carry someone off of it for not wearing a mask like i don't know i don't know but i really really want to see my dad so nashville might be in the future maybe like a long weekend or something i haven't been back to nashville in I mean, I went back for my best friend's wedding like two years ago, but like I haven't really been back. You know, I haven't gotten to like do anything or really see anyone for like 
four and a half years, which is crazy. That's how long ago it was that I left there. And it's weird because when I started this vlog channel, I lived here. So like the people who watch, most of the people who watch my videos don't even really know that I lived half of my life out there, which is wild. And Nashville is becoming quite trendy. It's funny because over the last like decade or so, it kind of has, like people have been moving there, but I feel like a lot of like YouTubers are moving there. And it's just cool to see like my hometown get some love um, it's an amazing city but I don't know if I would ever live there again I don't know I get that question a lot I need to be like where there's sunshine and not tornadoes and less exes you know I guess the people who have watched my main channel for a long time would probably know like they've seen my videos from when I lived there but yeah now I'm just talking for no reason I'm literally just blabbing for no reason again I just I don't I don't know how to function. I don't know how to be a human anyways. Okay, goodbye. I'm just kind of laying here and thinking about what it is that I want to do because Drew's in our room. I kind of want to leave him be and just give him some space to like close his eyes, have some quiet time. And I'm thinking about reading and I started reading a book back. Well, I read a lot like over last summer. I don't want to say a lot. I read like two books. <laughs> To me that's a lot but I definitely want to start reading more I feel like I used to have reading as a hobby for a long time and it was something that I really really enjoyed and it's just a nice way to escape and I definitely feel like I need to get back into it but my attention span I genuinely think this is because of technology I don't know if you can relate let me know but my attention span has just like dwindled because of technology I think like genuinely because I'm so used to just like so much information so quickly like scrolling and seeing so many things and so many different opinions and images that I definitely don't have the bandwidth to read as much anymore like i get extremely bored or the thought of doing it is just like oh even though i know i love it like i love just disconnecting in that way and like immersing myself in another world so maybe i'll start reading i do really have like quite a few books that i want to get through i want to have read every single book on my bookshelf and the truth is i haven't and i think that'll be good for me because youtube actually used to be my hobby like when i first started creating youtube videos i was a full-time waitress and it was just a fun way for me to like escape and kind of express some creativity and do my own thing and then it became my job which is amazing and it was literally like my dream I'm living my dream but now it's sort of replaced the hobby thing because it's my job but it's like I don't really do a hobby now as much so I don't know I've like kind of considered getting back into that again I just want to start doing more things for myself that don't have to do with productivity because freaking capitalism man we're always sitting here thinking that we need to be doing something productive ordering things for future videos or learning how to do the newest editing technique or you know whatever instead of like just fucking being so maybe i'll start doing that i don't know why i'm so talkative today it's just the floodgates have opened so let's find a book it's so funny the first thing that i'm noticing is this book that i bought when i was with jessica we went to the barnes and noble at the americana and i bought this book on burnout at the beginning of 2020 because i was so burned out like oh my god it was so bad and i was so burned out that the thought of reading a book on burnout like genuinely gave me anxiety so i have a book on burnout that i haven't read yet but i will if you remember our moving vlogs or if you watched me since we moved from our la apartment into this house there is also a book that has little baby drew look his little mullet Oh my god. Little precious mullet angel. I can't. That is so freaking cute. This is a Dean Koontz book called False Memory. Here is the bookmark, which is actually photo booth photos from when Drew and I went in. If you watch my vlogs back from when we were in Japan in... I guess it would have been 2018. Three years ago, we went in one of the freaking photo booths that like airbrushes you and like makes your eyes bigger and stuff so hilarious look at that i'm dead look at the lipstick 
that they put on Drew. Like that is amazing. So that's how long I've been trying to read this book and I've gotten 79 pages into it. Um, I don't know if it's me or if it's just this book, but like I've had a really hard time getting into it. It's like two stories running concurrently at the same time. So I don't know, it's like the stubborn person in me wants to just finish this. Maybe I'll continue. I'm just gonna go up there and get the book that I've already started because I don't wanna be reading like three books at once. I don't have the attention span for that. I'm gonna read a little bit of The Hate You Give. I wanna finish it. It's actually uncomfortable to read because you know the direction that it's going. You know what's gonna happen. It's a tale as old as time. It's a story about police brutality. There's a police killing and you kind of witness how the story kind of gets turned and warped into like being the victim's fault and it's really uncomfortable and so I should be reading that. I'm gonna go get that one. All right, it's a little while later. I actually read like a hundred more pages of this book. So I'm like a good halfway done. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Um, I actually just noticed that when I was using this bookmark that I purchased this book in Seattle. So Drew and I went to Seattle in 2019, I wanna say. So like almost two years ago. And I got this at the bookstore called Left Bank Bookstore on Pike Street in Seattle. So there we go. I am uh, I'm feeling good. It feels really good to just kind of like get back into that world and just be still and Do something with your brain. It's a very heavy book. It's insanely insanely frustrating and just maddening because it's Exactly what happens today. I just highly recommend it. So anyways, I'm gonna end this vlog here and just enjoy my weekend if I feel like vlogging or starting a new vlog later this weekend, I will pick up the camera, but if I don't, then I won't. The vlogs are a little infrequent recently, but that's just kind of where I'm at. There's just really not much to report, and I'm just really only vlogging when I feel like doing it, and today I did, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Sending lots of love to you, and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.